Eho mai, eho mai, eho mai, ai, ai, ai. Aloha. I really appreciate some of you people coming, especially from the far off lands such as New Zealand, Australia, Britain, Ireland, and taking the risk of coming here. What we'll be talking about, nobody knows. 29 years have gone by since I first had this experience. I've seen incredible, beautiful things happen to many, many people. And I know, I know in my heart we found the secret to the mind. And it's very simple, very, very simple. The more simple, the better. The secret lies in three principles, mind, consciousness, and thought. And those three principles are the principles that we use to see creation. The second you're born, you're in it. You're using mind, consciousness, and thought to see reality. Now, we're going to go deeper than the Freudian, deeper than what we know. We've got to go deeper, not to the personal mind, not the ego mind, not the ego consciousness, not the ego thoughts. You have to go deeper. Because when you use your personal mind, personal consciousness, and personal thought, what you're doing, you're seeing creation after form. And this is where the Freudian thing innocently, and I'm going to keep saying this, innocently didn't know. They were looking at what was created instead of what was creating. So we have to go deeper. And you look for divine mind, divine consciousness, and divine thought before the formation of the reality that we now live in. There lies the answer. There lies the answer to the true nature of mind. And that's what you look for, the true nature of mind, the true nature of thought. You look for that. And if you can find the true nature of mind, conscious, and thought, you'll free yourself for the rest of your life. You'll take yourself into mental health and you'll stay there because you'll start to realize all it is is thought. Every bit of anger you have, every bit of jealousy you have, every bit of emotional despair that you have is all created from the personal mind. And when you go beyond the personal mind, you find the secret to life. You're using those three principles right now to look at me. You're using the three principles to try and understand what's being said. You can't get away from the three principles. Can't get away from it. The only thing is you don't know you're using it. And nobody's ever told you before. But everybody in this hall, literally everybody, is sitting in the middle of mental health. Everybody in the mental institute is sitting in the middle of mental health. But they don't know it because their own personal minds have led them astray. And if you feel yourself going astray and going down low, 
getting depressed. Try and look and see all it is. You've had a change in thought. And people will say to me, oh, Sid, you don't realize it's not that simple. It is that simple. It's the simplicity it throws people because you try and figure it out with your little mind. And that's one of the tricks in life. The good Lord brought us into this world, gave us three principles to work from and a free will and said, go find yourself. So you look all over the world. You look outside looking for yourself. And you never find it until you look in the mirror. And when you look in the mirror, you'll find one of the wisest people on earth if you can take your personal thoughts away. And that's what we're here for this weekend, to try and take your personal thoughts away, to go beyond it and find that incredible power that lies within yourself. This is why all the, the sages throughout time, all the wise, have always said, look within for the answer. And you say, okay, I'll do that. Now, where will we go first? You missed it. <laughs> it's always inside you, always. It's your birthright to find this. And I was lucky enough, 29 years ago, within a couple of seconds to realize the simplicity. All I realized was the true meaning of God. That's all, nothing else, the true meaning of God. The second I realized that, automatically, I found the true nature of mind. And automatically, I found the true nature of thought. Because they are, the, they are the, the trinity of all psychological experience here on Earth. And I thought, wow, I have to tell a psychologist this, and he'll find a secret, and he'll find all this mental health for his patients. But it didn't work out that way. <laughs> After 29 years, I'm still struggling trying to get them to see it. And when I first had this, I thought to myself, I'd love it to go to the universities where it belongs. And I went from one university to the other and nobody could see it. Then something mysterious started to happen. Ordinary people, people who were in mental hospitals, people who were under prescribed drugs to, just to make them cope for life. They would come to the house. Then suddenly, just like that, their eyes would open up and they would say, got it, I don't need a doctor anymore. And they would go back to their therapist and say, thank you, thank you for all the help you've given me, but I don't need you anymore. And the therapist would say, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you talking about? They'll say, well, all I realized was it was my own thoughts that was creating my problem. And the therapist would say, no, 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 it's a lot worse than that. It's a lot worse than that. <laughs> then the next thing you know, the ordinary person would be consulting the doctor. And I thought, well, if this is the way it has to go, it way, this is the way it'll go. So people from all over the world started to come. And they all started to pick it up. And they jumped to boundaries of time and found what they were looking for. Instead of going through a process, go from this person to that person, this place to that place, this idea from another idea, they found it now. That's why the wise from the beginning of time have always told you the most important thing in this world is to live in the now. Because if you live in the now, you're not living in the past, you're not living in the future, you're living now. You're living in an uncontaminated version of life. Now, instead of taking years to get to this stage, 
they found it in an instant. They tell me it takes years and years to find mental health. That's not true. You're looking for one magical thought, and if you can find that one magical thought, you're free. You really are. You're free for life. And honestly, all it is is love and understanding. That's what they're giving away. And the people react when they find love and understanding. Because that's why a lot of them went astray in the first place. Because they lacked it. And they blamed their parents. They blamed their past. And this is the big problem. We believe that. And it's true to one stage. One stage in life, when you were a child, you go through all those experiences, whether they be good or bad, and this creates your character. And you carry it through life. But that's not where the cure is in the past. The cure's now. Because when you look really carefully, really carefully, think about it. Does the past really exist? Or is it in your head? Does the future really exist? Or is it in your head? The past no longer exists. The future no, doesn't exist. The only thing that exists is now. And if you can see that, what it does it drops all those horrible feelings or experiences you've gone through. It drops them. And it cleans the slate, cleans your mind, and you see with clarity now. Again, I say, this is why all the wise from the past have always told you to come back to the now. That's all that exists. You see, there's nothing you can do by thinking about the negative. There really isn't. It just gets you in trouble. And if you realize it's all thought, you come back to the positive, then you do something positive. Believe me, if anybody in this world realizes the true nature of thought, they are automatically enlightened. If anybody realizes the true nature of mind, they're automatically enlightened. And if anybody realizes the true nature of consciousness, they're automatically enlightened. Because all three are the same thing with different words, and words are trying to explain the unexplainable. Because what I'm saying to you now is not the truth. It's the echo of the truth. Because the second it comes out of your mouth, it comes from the very essence of your soul, because your soul is pure consciousness. It comes out, and as soon as it reaches this physical reality, it is no longer truth. It's the echo of truth. And when you talk truth, or you talk true knowledge, whatever you want to call it, It's only the echo. It is not truth. Truth can only be found one place and one place only, and that is deep within your own soul. It's inside. It's always been there. And when you start to explain it, you're explaining in metaphor. It's a metaphor. All everything I've said today is a metaphor. You look your own Bible, whatever it may be, it's all metaphors. And we take the metaphors as gospel and they get lost. Now, a lot of people get upset at me if they're religious people because I am not a religious person. I never will be. Spiritual, yes. Spiritual is before the form, before creation. 
And if you can talk before form, you're talking to every human soul in the world. Somebody says to me, there's no one thing in the world can help everybody. They don't know what they're talking about. Because I said, as I said before, the three principles are before form. They're divine gifts that enable us to see life. How you use them is up to you because you have a free will. And somebody says, no, I don't have a free will. Maybe you have, but I don't. They're arguing. Why are they arguing? What are they using? Their free will. They're using their free will to argue. And they're using the free principles to argue with. You can't get away from it. The three principles aren't out there. They aren't up in heaven. They aren't out. The three principles are, you're shrouded with them. Everything you see is the three principles in action. You look out there, you see the ocean, you see the trees. That's the three principles in action. But those trees and those, that ocean and everything else, the sky, would not be there if you didn't have a free will and the three principles. You take away your thought, take away thought, you would be, there'd be nothing. Nothing. You wouldn't even exist. Take away your consciousness, nothing would exist. Take away your mind, nothing would exist. Now remember what I'm talking about is not a Freudian mind. I'm talking about divine mind. And you are divine mind. You, you, you know that saying, I am what I seek? That's what I'm talking about. You are what you seek. All words mean in one thing, and that's that great oneness. And that great oneness is the form and the form, the form and the formless together. Can you put the form and the formless together? You have the allness. Now, I'll let you in a little secret. If you don't understand what's being said, great. <laughs> you're looking for a feeling. It's when people say, I know what you're talking about. Mind, consciousness, and thought. Well, that's simple. There's only three things. Like Susie said to me once, when she was a little girl, she wanted to play an instrument. And she looked at all these different instruments, the piano, they had all these keys. Oh, that's difficult. An accordion, that's difficult. Banjo, that's diff difficult. And she thought, ah. Oh, the violin, it's only got three strings. That's easy. <laughs> but it isn't. It's one of the most difficult things in the world. Until you realize what they mean. And mind, consciousness, and thought. I'm going to keep saying that. It's what you're looking for. You could get a four-year-old child and say to them, Repeat after me. The secret lies in mind, consciousness, and thought. Within a minute, they would have it, but they wouldn't have the secret. So the grown-up comes and says, well, I can do it, mind, consciousness, and thought. And they go around spreading mind, consciousness, and thought, and they're spreading it with their old, their old knowledge. When you find true knowledge, the old has a sudden death. It dies immediately. It is of no value. Everything has come from your little mind, your little consciousness, your little thought system, just vanishes. And when that vanishes, it's like that window. If I get up and put scratches all over that window. 
got a thousand scratches on it. You can barely see through it. And each scratch represents wrongful thinking. Now, when you start to realize mind, conscious, and thought, bit by bit, those scratches disappear. Then you start seeing with clarity. Because you're uncontaminating your, your own mind. And that's the idea. Now, if anybody takes you back into the past, you know what they're doing? They're saying, can you see through that window? And say, no. Then they put a whole bunch of scratches on it from the past and say, can you see now? No. Oh, great. Come back tomorrow and we'll have another session. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. But it's all done innocently. And you have to remember that. It's all done innocently. And if you can use those three principles, not just for yourself, but for everybody, because the more help you can give to humanity, the more help you bring to yourself. You know that saying, to give is to receive? When I'm giving you this, I'm filling up so much, I can hardly talk. Because I'm giving away something that I know will help you through life. And when you go home, you'll give it to your children. You give it to your children, they pick it up, they go to school, and instead of being little tyrants, there's something happens to them. They go to school, they find new friends. They, they give it away. And it's like, a, it's like a chain letter. It just keeps going. I've seen people change so fast, even in an audience. You look around and you see somebody's face. It's all drawn and worried. And you look around and you think, well, where did that person go? And they're sitting smiling. They're happy. And they come up and tell you later on, they've never felt like this in their life before. You meet them six months later, you don't even know them. And they'll say, do you know, you remember me? And they'll say, no, I'm sorry, who are you? Well, I'm the lady that, and they explain who they are. Because once you realize that you never go back, once your consciousness has taken a jump, once it's risen, you never go back. You might temporarily fall into it. But you say to yourself, wait a minute, I don't like this. This is my thoughts. It's gone again. Then you're back into sanity. And you might not hear it. And later on, you might be having a bath. You might be walking down the street. You might just be sitting. And all of a sudden, bingo. You say, got it. Your life will never be the same. It's a sudden. Because you get an insight. That's why those people throughout the ages have always talked about an insight. Look within. Look inside for the answer. An insight. Look inside. An insight. It's a sight from within. And that's, what, that's where wisdom comes from. Because you bypassed your little mind, your little consciousness, and your little thought system You've gone deep into your soul where the purity of thought, purity of consciousness, purity of mind exists. You tap into it and you go, oh, now I know what it means. I know what she was saying or he was saying. Then you turn around to your friend and you say, you know something I just realized? And you could talk till hell freezes over. If they're not ready, they won't hear you. Because you're only calling the echo of what you found. You can't explain it. I'm not explaining it right now. I'm trying. But I'm not explaining it. It's up to you. Always up to you.
There's a million stories go with this. A lot of funny ones, a lot of sad ones, but mostly funny. Comical ones. And I know it's a little bit fearsome for somebody that's been trained for many, many years on a certain thing to find out that all their training was in vain. I know that. I'm not stupid. <laughs> but that one insight be worth ten times, a hundred times all the training put together. And that's what some of you people here have realized. That your training you had was of no value. And it frightened the living dickens out of you. You've all, many of you here have told me. But what you find to replace it is so far beyond you don't want it anymore. It's like saying you had bad memories. I don't want to lose my bad memories because I worked for them. I went through hell for all these bad experiences and memories. And you're going to take them away from me? I don't want that. I just want to be happy. Well, how are you going to be happy if you're hanging on to the old? You've got to throw it away and find a new. And when you find a new, you've got it. So if anybody ever starts taking you back into the past, I, my advice is walk out and see that person is lost. See them as innocent. Don't get angry, just see them as lost and walk away. And if you want help, look for somebody that's positive. I once had a, a lady come to me and she'd been married five times. She was married five times. And each time she got a divorce. You know what her job was? A marriage counselor. <laughs> a trained marriage counselor. And I said to her, well, look, there's something wrong here. And we started to discuss it. And there was three others with her, and they said, well, you know, said, we were taught at school the mental health of the practitioner is immaterial if they stick to their training. Now, if their training was right, they wouldn't be in that position. You can only give away what you have. If I go in my wallet now and I have a $20 bill, I can't give you 50. <laughs> and if I'm an unhappy person, all I can give you is unhappiness. I can tell you how I became unhappy, that's no problem. But I can't tell you how to be happy. So always look for a positive person. Look for somebody that's, if you go for a marriage counseling, and the marriage counselor is in a pr and has big problems at home, I would really think about it. <laughs> so, it's all logic. You're looking for logic. You're looking for simplicity. So, should we just take a little break just now and uh, just discuss with each other whatever you want? So, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.